Remember back in the day, man, for all my fellas, you know, you had that homeboy that, uh, you know, that hooked you, hooked you up with a female friend, you know, from a rival high school or, or maybe a high school from a, a couple of towns over. And, uh, you know, he called on three-way. And she sounds good. And the conversation good. And then when you meet in person, it's like, damn. She actually look. She looks good. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the one percent. It's the it's the one out of a hundred chance that she looks good, and she's that one percent. So it's like, wow, okay. So that's what this album was to me. So yeah. So and uh, shout out to all the women that looks as good as they sound. This is hip hop album debate. Let's get the conversation going. Ain't no time to waste. Yeah, the podcast that I know you've been wanting. They talking real hip hop. Got everybody talking. Let's go. Yeah, keeping 100 and stay true. Hosted by my homie Q. Tune in and come through. Yeah, this be the spot. The number one place all day. This is hip hop album debate. Let's go. Hey, yeah. Welcome to Hip Hop Album Debate the Podcast. This is Q and this is episode 27. And this debate topic is which was the better album between Snoop Dogg's Doggy Style or the Notorious B.I.G. Ready to Die. All right. Hey, before we get into this debate, though, uh, all my people on YouTube, y'all be sure to subscribe. Um like share tell a friend to tell a friend to tell a friend and uh yeah we're gonna do it like that so um yeah this is episode 27 and um so we got two iconic albums man two solid debuts that you probably can ask for more uh solid debut between the two um snoops Doggy Style came first. It came in uh '93, and uh man, it, I t- I tell you, so if you were a fan of uh Dr. Dre the Chronic, this this was the segue. Uh, you know, uh, should I say that was the segue to Doggy Style, and then when it came out, oh man, of course you had the singles. Uh, Who am I? What's my name? Gin and Juice, uh, Doggy Dog World, and uh, may I add, man, Doggy Dog World featuring the Dog Pound and the Dramatics is probably the best, man, that's probably the best video of the 90s. I, I can't think of anything off the dome that would top that. Um, so I, I want to say that was the best video in the 90s and definitely top 10. Of all time. Yeah, I said it and I meant it. Um, and not only that, man, uh another thing that made that video special, uh, the group it featured the the dramatics, which was singing the hook. You know, it's a dog, it's a dog, it's a dog, it's a dog world. Yeah. So the dramatics the group from the seventies, they were the dramatics, and then when Ricky Harris, may God rest his soul, the, the comedian that played Ty Dow in the video, he gave them that name, the Fabulous Dramatics. And then from that point on, instead of being the Dramatics, they were the Fabulous Dramatics. So, um, so yeah, kudos to, to them for that. Um, but, again, solid album. Uh, it was comical. You know, of course, you had the W Balls um, skits on there. Uh, but aside from that, uh, I mean, it was so many songs on there, uh, the shit's niche, but, um, th- that, w- that was bangers, but ain't no fun that the homies can't have none. Oh my God. That song went from, oh my God. It had me going from want to sound like baby face and key sweat to I'm singing Nate dog. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? When I mentioned last night, baby, yeah, I'm singing Nate Dog now instead of uh, uh, I only think of you on two occasions. So yeah, that was uh, that was a good good look, but a bad influence. 
All right, but uh, anyway, so we're going to go to Ready to Die, Biggie. All right, another solid debut again. Uh, it had the singles, Juicy, Big Papa, uh, One More Chance, which the remix that we would know uh, on the video was not on the album. Uh, but I liked that song too, uh, One More Chance. Um, the album version as well, which if I had to choose between the two, of course, I like the video version, which sampled uh, the barge. Um, I can't think of the song that they sampled, but anyways, uh, that was a sample, but, um, uh, yeah, Biggie was, uh, that was a solid album, but it's funny cause, um, uh, I think Puffy, I think the way he pulled that off, it was so smooth cause me listening to Juicy, Big Papa, my initial thoughts of Biggie before I heard the album, I thought he was a clean rapper. You know, he kept it clean, he didn't do much cursing. And I, I recall telling my older brother, like, yeah, I like I like this Biggie guy because he don't he don't have to cuss and he's not gangster or none of that. And my brother just gave me that look like, yeah, OK. <laughs> yeah, he has a song with his album called Me and My Bitch. And I'm like, oh, OK. <laughs> so, uh so yeah just imagine me trying to um play that song for my parents like yeah check out this uh notorious big he's a clean rapper and they would have got a hold of me and my bitch oh that would have been bad you know <laughs> when i first met you i admit my first thought was the trick you look so good yeah that would have went over well um but of course yeah ready to die had some jams of course uh the what feature and met the man which uh which was the only feature on the album uh, so that says a lot too uh, about Met the Man and that whole Wu Tang uh, at the time. Uh, the Warning. So it's a lot of jams on that album as well. But uh, if I had to choose between the two, if I got to choose between the two, man, I got to go with Doggy Style. I got to go with Snoop. I enjoyed both albums, but it was something about it was just something about the um, the build up. With Doggy Style. It was the build up that got me. Because. A lot of times. Especially back in the day man. You know sometimes our favorite rapper let us down. You know it was a, it was a big build up. And the single might have been fire. It might have been a hit single. Then when you buy the album. It's like damn that was the only dope song on the album. But Doggy Style that wasn't the case. And so, to me, this album was kind of like, remember back in the day, man, for all my fellas, you know, you had that homeboy that, uh, you know, that hooked you, hooked you up with a female friend, you know, from a rival high school or, or maybe a high school from a, a couple of towns over. And, uh, you know, he called on three-way and she sounds good and the conversation good. And then when you meet her in person, it's like, damn, she actually look. She looks good. <laughs> it's, it's the it's the one percent. It's the it's the one out of a hundred chance that she looks good, and she's that one percent. So it's like, wow, okay. So that's what this album was to me. So yeah. So and uh, shout out to all the women that looks as good as they sound. But yeah, Doggy Style was that album to me. Uh, it met the expectations. I was happy to buy it. Um, well, I didn't buy it when it first came out. My cousin had it on cassette, but I, but I was couldn't wait to buy it when I was old enough to buy the album. So I'm going with Doggy Style. So uh, let's see what the people got to say, man. Let's see. Nobody left a comment on the speed pipe, but uh. My man Victor on Facebook said, ready to die. So that's who he went with. And the polls on the website said, uh, ready to die as well by 67%. So, yeah. So anyway, man, hey, y'all holler at your boy Q. Y'all let me know something. Again, this is a ongoing conversation. It never ends. Holler at your boy. Leave me a comment or something. Uh, we'll chop it up. So, yeah. Episode 27. I'm gone. Peace. Hey.